Hello and welcome back to my channel once again. My name is Victoria and this is my YouTube channel in English where I talk about Latin American cases so that more people can learn about them. So I'm from Argentina. Actually, I speak Spanish, but well, we're here, right? Here we are. Today, we'll be talking about the tragedy of Kiss Nightclub. Located in the city of Santa Maria, a university or college city in the state of Rio Grande do Sul in the south of Brazil. This was the largest tragedy that occurred in that state as well as the second largest fire in Brazil's history and the third worst nightclub tragedy in the world. On the 26th of January of 2013, a group of students from the University of Santa Maria threw a party at the Kiss nightclub. The place was overcrowded beyond its capacity and two bands were playing live that Saturday night. Gurizada, Fandangueira and Pimenta e Seus Comparsas. Everything seemed fine and the party went on until around 2.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. Then it's when the incident began. While Gurizada Fandangueira was playing on the stage, the lead singer Marcelo de Jesus dos Santos lighted up a firework. The sparks of the firework made the acoustic foam, which was covering the ceiling, catch on fire very quickly. The band on stage tried to turn the fire off, but in less than three minutes, a thick black and toxic smoke had spread all over the club, reducing visibility and making it hard to breathe for everyone inside. So the nightclub had just one door to exit, and the security guards, unaware of the fire, locked it up thinking there was a fight going on inside the place and people wanted to leave without paying. With the only door blocked, people crowded around the exit and started to pile up. Many people ran to the toilets, thinking there was another exit in there due to the bright lights, but there wasn't any. They were all trapped inside the burning building. Days later, the autopsy confirmed at least 19% of the bodies found inside the club were piled up in the toilets. The firemen ran to the club and around 5 a.m. they managed to control the flames. But the building was very damaged and at risk of collapsing, making it very hard to rescue the people inside. Finally, at around 1 p.m. that Sunday, all the bodies were taken out from the building. The firemen helping on the scene told the news media that the kids' phones were ringing constantly with phone calls from their parents, who were trying to contact their children. The morgue of Santa Maria only had capacity for 10 bodies. So the firemen took the bodies to the local sports center, Miguel Sevi Viero, in the city, where thousands of people gathered to help as voluntaries. A news media reporter told the RBS agency that the gym looked like an anthill, with thousands of volunteers who ran to help when they heard the news. Besides doctors and therapists, there are social workers nurses, soldiers, and policemen. Many of them are in flip-flops and short pants. This emergency doesn't require a dress code. Inside the sports center, the parents went in to look for their children and claim their bodies. A young woman trapped inside the club, Michelle Cardoso, managed to send a message on Facebook to inform about the fire around 3.30 in the morning. People on social media asked for more information to help her, but they never got a reply back. Hours later that Sunday, Michelle was confirmed as one of the first victims. In the end, 242 people died in the nightclub, 120 men and 113 women between the ages of 18 to 30. Two members of the band Pimenta e Seus Comparsas passed away as well as a member of Gurizada Fandangueira. Along with these deaths, 636 people were wounded and had to be hospitalized due to breathing complications caused by the fire and smoke. According to the doctors, they had inhaled toxic gases, which resulted in most of the deaths. Along with the pneumonitis, many people suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and burns from the fire. In February, just a few days after the tragedy, the Dr. Marcelo Cipel from the University of Toronto in Canada flew to Brazil to help with the cases of pneumonitis, since at that moment at least 72 people were in critical condition. The doctors used a technique to regenerate their lungs, only possible thanks to a donation of equipment by a German company. 
the news of the tragedy were known all across the world. With both national and international news media like CNN, The Guardian, The New York Times, the BBC and Reuters reporting the case. How did a tragedy like this happen? There are several reasons as to why, first of all, the club had a maximum capacity of a thousand people, but the police and firemen on the scene reported there were at least 2,000 people inside, which is double the capacity the venue could hold. Besides the overcrowding, the license of the club had also expired a year before, in August of 2012, and it didn't count with a proper evacuation plan. The firemen department were in charge of checking the security of these nightclubs all across the city, and despite knowing the license was not updated, they let the nightclub run anyway. Thanks to this, all across Brazil, the mayors of the towns checked the licenses and shut down several nightclubs infringing the law. Many people, such as the members of the bands, the staff of the nightclub and survivors of the tragedy, told the Brazilian news media it was pretty common to light up fireworks and pyrotechnics inside nightclubs. This was not just a normal practice in KISS, but in many other nightclubs across the country. And it wasn't the first time there were fireworks lighting up inside the building. The acoustic foam that covered the entire club wasn't authorized by the fireman department. It had been installed by the owners of the club due to several complaints from the neighbors about the loud music. And this material is highly flammable and toxic. The nightclub also did not follow the state law that demanded at least two exit doors, and the place didn't count with any fire extinguishers in sight. The owners of the nightclub and the members of Gurizada Fandangueira were arrested the next day on January 28th. One of the club owners, Elisandro Spor, denied all the responsibilities and said he had actually helped people escape. But the footage of the security cameras quickly proved that was a lie. While he was in the hospital, he tried to take his life, but failed. The autopsies finally revealed that the deaths by suffocation had been caused by cyanide gas released when the acoustic foam caught on fire. This gas was used by the Nazis during World War II. This gas, by the way, was used by the Nazis during World War II, releasing it inside the gas chambers in concentration camps. After this tragic event, the families and friends of the victims gathered together to remember their loved ones and to claim for justice in front of the nightclub, as well as in several churches all across the state of Rio Grande do Sul. The mayor of Santa Maria, Cesar Skirmer, declared 30 days of mourning for the city and the president of Brazil, Dilma Rousseff, flew from Santiago de Chile to Santa Maria in the morning of the tragedy and declared three days of national mourning. Before her speech for the press media, the president asked for a minute of silence and demanded the mayors all across Brazil to never let another tragedy like this happen again. She also said, On Sunday, I visited Santa Maria and the pain I witnessed is indescribable. I speak from this pain to remind everyone of their responsibilities with the people. In 2019, the Brazilian government decided to create a new law called after the nightclub, with more strict security laws to hand in licenses to operate nightclubs in the country. The law requires nightclubs to count with fire extinguishers, emergency exits, fire alarms, and emergency lights, among other requirements. Despite this, the victims and their families didn't receive justice until very recently. On the 10th of December of 2021, almost nine years after the tragedy, the four accused people were condemned by the justice of Rio Grande do Sul after an eight-day long trial. The judge of the case, Orlando Fassini Neto, sentenced Elisandra Spor and Mauro Hoffman, the owners of the nightclub, to 22 years and six months in prison and 19 years and six months in prison, respectively. The other two accused men, Marcelo de Jesus dos Santos, the lead singer of the group, and his assistant, Luciano Bonilla Leoa, received a sentence of 18 years in prison. Along with them, the investigations determined that eight firemen had also been responsible for the tragedy due to not doing a correct inspection of the building in 2012 and letting the nightclub run anyway. Despite the sentence, four men are still free due to an avias corpus presented to the judges. Meanwhile, the rest of the accused people are still waiting for trial. This tragedy actually has been compared to what happened in Argentina in 2004, the tragedy of Cromañón, another nightclub that caught on fire. This has many similarities to what happened in Kiss, corruption and lies that caused the lives of hundreds of young people. 
Cromañón was a nightclub in the city of Buenos Aires where many rock bands used to play gigs and light up fireworks. It actually kept on happening all over Latin America, this thing of playing with fireworks inside the buildings. Since then, we don't do that anymore, at all, of course. But it was, you know, a cultural thing at that moment. On the 30th of December of 2004, the band Callejeros was playing a gig when the ceiling, covered in highly flammable materials, caught on fire due to a firework, causing the death of 194 people as well as more than a thousand injured. Cromagnon, just like Kiss, was overcrowded and not properly equipped with fire extinguishers, and the doors were also blocked out. Both tragedies were caused by improper management of the nightclubs by their owners, as well as the local and national authorities. In January of the next year, on its ninth anniversary, Netflix will start shooting a documentary about this case called Todo Día a Mesma Noite, which translates to Every Day the Same Night, based on a book with the same name written in 2018 by the famous journalist and writer Daniela Arbex. In her book, Arbex collects thousands of testimonies from survivors, doctors, firemen, and family members of the victims about what happened inside the nightclub. So, did you know about any of these tragedies? Did you know what they have caused? Have you ever seen any news about this? Please tell me anything in the comments below. I'll be reading. But that's it for today's video. So you have recommendations on the screen right now and I am going because that's it. I still have no idea how to sign off. So I guess just bye bye.